YouTube, it's Tone. I'm back with another one for you. And this one is a continuation of uh, dealing with the presentments. This is the sixth video. This one here, we'll get into a little bit of the uh, possible options that you could take. So how to A4V the case, whatever it is, criminal, um, commercial. I don't even know why they even, really it's all just commercial. And we'll get into that right now too as well. Um, and then I have the other video in, in the archives, in the earlier videos, you see uh, there's going to be a series called Cred Creditors and Their Bonds. You watch that, it shows you the process of how to discharge the case using a uh, bill of exchange and promissory notes and things like that. So this is a, this here is like a, a different way of using the private bank as A4B here. So it is often considerably more difficult using the acceptance for value process for dealing with matters involving a mala and sin crime than a mala prohibida offense. Although all crimes, quote unquote, in the system today are commercial crimes. So what he's talking about here, the he said it's harder to do the A4V process for dealing with matters of mala and sin crime, meaning that so crimes that uh, would literally be against the law if there was a such thing as law, but everything is commercial. So he's talking about like murder and things like that and shit. So he's saying it's harder to use the A4V process for that, but ultimately all the charges here that could ever be brought are all uh, commercial. And that's how these clowns are getting away with that because everything is commercial and they know that. So you see 27 USC 7211, <clears throat> you look into that and it shows you a little bit more about the commercial nature of uh of how these about how everything here works too if you look into that 27 usc 7211 so four the only way we can discharge and offset such charges completely neutralize and eliminate them totally and close the uh close the accounting is through an acceptance and return for value through the use of our exemption which we make available to be used uh, for exchange as the funds for discharging the obligations or charges per the maximum of law as a thing is bound so it is unbound meaning that however the hell you decided to make that bullshit up is the same way you're gonna make that shit disappear because that shit is ridiculous so number five when we as the creator and sovereign proceed as above we are functioning right and then they fucking expect you to tell them how to fuck to fix the problem it's like bro you guys are the ones that created it and they're like oh well we don't know what's going on what's the best solution are you fucking kidding me bro the best solution <laughs> for the problem that you created and you want me to come up with a great idea for that one okay so five don't let me come up with a good idea for that one because i will so five when we as the creditor and sovereign proceed as above we are functioning as the king the colorable public side has rendered dependent upon the subservient to our acts. By law, public officers and fiduciaries have no discretion. Compliance is mandatory. It is unrealistic, of course, to think that those who structure and operate the system uh, for our protection and betterment, in addition and of cruel importance, is to, uh, is to neutralize the, unre the unrevealed presumption on which the system operates that we, the real us, have agreed to be united with and treated the same as our straw man. Uh, we remove that presumption by noticing the proper parties of the foundational documents referenced below. Many times when these documents are placed on the record in a court case, the case disappears if they cannot access the real you and your body, labor, and or property. They are left hanging out to dry in their cloud cuckoo land. And that's where I like to leave these people hanging out all by themselves in their fucking ridiculous ass world that they decide to live in because that shit is completely imaginary. And I choose not to live in a fairy tale world like that one. So, I, you know, if I ever can't go, I won't. You know what I'm saying? There's, some, there's, been, there's been times where I didn't have a choice but to go. When you get kidnapped, what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? So you know how that whole game goes. You know what I mean? So moving on. Let's see what we got here. Oh, so here we're going to get into the A4V process and how that shit would work on these uh, presentments and offers that you may receive. <clears throat> so upon reaving, uh, receiving a presentment, uh, receipt of an offer, presentment will occur in one of the following ways. One, by mail, two in person, or three after arrest and being placed in custody. Here with below, we will concern ourselves with the first two modes of receiving a presentment. Number one, as soon as you receive an offer, such as a bill or statement you wish to discharge, make a copy, preferably color copy, certified as a true copy and exact copy by a notary 
uh, of the offer and keep that copy in a safe place. If you are already in court, go to the court and obtain at least two copies certified by the court clerk of the documents filed on a case by the other party. Then use these as you would any ordinary presentment following the procedure set forth here under. Number one, after making a copy of the essential documents issued by the other side, imprint over the first page of the original document the following text. There are numerous versions of this and options use which one you think is best for you, right? So, and these are in my in my book too as well, Magic Money Mechanics. You guys check that book out. It shows you how to do the uh, how to do the A four Vs on bills and things like that. Crazy shit, man. There is no limit. We have unlimited credit. All right. So this so. The, uh, the words that I'm about to speak right now are in red, and these are going to go with a 45 degree angle over over the uh, presentment to, to uh, cancel it out. So this presentment is accepted for assessed value and returned in exchange for settlement and closure of this accounting. Certified and sworn on the commercial liability of the authorized representative as true, correct, and complete with all related endorsements front and back and uh, prepaid exempt from levy. Adjust the account and release the orders to the authorized representative immediately. And so keep in mind too that when you're signing all these, everything that has writing on it has to be stamped front and back. And you got to sign it front and back of everything that has any type of writing on it at all to accept all the pages. Because they'll go and take the back and take the whole thing from you just like that. And you can get robbed like that. So autograph. You post a stamp here underneath that says to use the two cents, the two cents stamp. I haven't done enough research into the two cents stamp, so I can't really can't comment on that. So two, if you had your bullet stamp made, which is what you should do, you should have like a like a red stamp made and shit like that for any of your bills and all that. Uh, and then you could just use it on this too as well. You know what I'm saying? The same thing that you would use on the Magic Money Mechanics. So which includes your full name and upper and lowercase. Some people will use uh, all lowercase letters in the document for ancient linguistic reasons as well as your EIN. Uh, exemption ID number, which would be a social with no dashes, and terms stating that you are operating in a capacity being the living principal and authorized representative. Stamp your bullet stamp in gold ink so that it is over part of your accepted every term for value, i.e. ARFV. Stamp above and also across the upper left-hand portion of the postage stamp. So canceling a quarter of it there. And so these are different, you know, options that you have here, right? Because they're not going to tell you what all your options are. So autograph. Autograph your name at a, a, a diagonal across the 45-degree uh, postage stamp that has your autograph uh, is done over a part of the ARFV text. Across the postage stamp and on the presentment itself, use blue or purple ink. Put uh, in the date by hand. So 17. So there appears to be four alphabets in English. Uh... Yeah, so I'm not going to get into that. So, 18, a long-standing concern about what color ink is best to use for such things as signing a document with an accepted for value stamp uh, has been recently resolved for this author who has now concluded that red is not good. Blue or purple is optimal. Uh, if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with purple. Purple being uh, royalty and then the first wave of color just in this realm in general. So I'd probably go with purple is optimum rather than indicating blood and living being as we had thought the significance of the color scheme of the system indicates that red expresses deficiencies such as being in the red i disagree i do disagree i think that it represents magnetism in life and red being uh the color of iron and things like that and then you get plasma ether and all that too just from the red so it's not just uh just as simple as that so if you have if you do not have your bullet stamp, use the postage stamp as above, autographing on a diagonal across across the stamp, filling in the date, and also printing your EIN, which is your exemption ID number social without dashes, as per the following. This presentment is accepted uh, for assessed value, and you're saying this because you don't know what the actual um, what the actual value is because all these criminal charges are not listed with a dollar value next to them, but they do. I assure you, they do carry a. Uh, what do you call it? They do carry a uh, financial value as well. So a monetary value. So this presentment is, is accepted and assessed for value and returned in exchange for settlement and closure of this accounting certified and sworn on the commercial liability of the authorized party as true, correct and complete with all related endorsements front and back endorsements mean that you sign them prepaid exempt from levy, adjust the account and release the orders to the authorized representative immediately, which is uh, whoever the hell is asking for that, for that money and attempting to hold you hostage in the meantime, because they don't have the balls to just tell you what it is. 
If they could just tell you what it was, you would just fucking sign the piece of paper and leave, but they can't tell you that. <laughs> they can't just tell you that. They can't just tell you that one. So let's see what we got here. So five, your package to the offerer will consist of A, a verified notice by affidavit notarized that informs the presenter of what the documents are that are attached and enclosed, what is required of the presenter. Notice that the notary retaining a copy of the documents being sent and is acting as a disinterested third party, which would be a neutral third party, and that if the presenter does not respond to the notary within required time, 10 days in most cases, with that notice that he uh, has adjusted the account and the obligation is discharged, a certificate of non-response will be forthcoming from the notary that constitutes a notice of dishonor and judgment in the estoppel on the law. So, and a, uh, a notary does have the power to do all that. So, you're accepted in return for value presentment, signed and dated by you in blue or purple ink, and bearing your private treasury UCC contract trust account number SS without dashes. Number six, if the notary does not hear from the offerer within 10 days that the discharge has occurred and the accounting is closed, had the notary send the offerer a certificate of non-response, this constitutes a certificate of uh, dishonor and a judgment in the estoppel on the law, which bars the offerer and everyone else uh, from ever coming after you again concerning the issue of the offerer. Do you see what it is? You see in the game now? You see in the game now? So if a court case is involved, have your notary also notarize such things as the following. One, certified copy of the oath of office of whatever judge is involved. If the identity of the judge is known at that point as obtained from the secretary of state of the state or the county recorder or whatever office is holding it. Number two, notice of waiver of protest. This document requests the court to waive any fee, fine, cost, or charge the court is looking for. A default position by the court is automatic record of involuntary bankruptcy. If the court dishonors your request as the living principal and authorized representative of your straw man, your notice informs them that their dishonor constitute a waiver of right to protest the matter or anything connected therewith, henceforth moving forward. Number three, notice of acceptance, standing and status request for remedy. This pleading format document instructs the court to discharge all charges and dismiss the case based upon your acceptance or return for value of the charging instruments and all court documents along with the filing the bond. Or in the alternative, produce the assessment for the charges, whether the charging uh, instrument is a citation, complaint, information statement, or indictment. See instructions for executing and using employee ID. So produce the assessment for the charges. So that would be like a, like a true bill in commerce or something like that. So you're asking them for to go ahead and put a dollar sign attached to every other bill to make it easy for you to discharge if they're going to keep playing their stupid games and pretending that it's actually a crime. So it is an automatic dishonor forfeit position if the court does not provide the assessment for the charges if you require it. Substantiation of the bona fide nature of the assessment consists of providing the commercial paperwork that reveals the origin, nature, particulars, and legitimacy of the assessment, which, to be genuine, must be executed by the responsible party under affidavit, sworn true, correct, and complete, with the stated commercial liability risk by the responsible party in case he is found to be in error, and swearing to the accuracy, relevance, contractual validity, and the verifiability of all allegations made of the exactitude of the some certain amount of the assessment. Failure to put up or shut up in this regard signifies the court stipulation that it is continuing to entertain prosecution of non-existent charges, which is exactly what they do, which is exactly what they do, which is exactly what they do. So, so two, bond, a single page bond on court pleading formats. This bond is filed in the court, in the court on court pleading format. Such format renders this document more familiar in appearance and therefore more easily filed than trying to file papers that are not in pleading format. Elaboration on the bond, its use, the history of the success is discussed here under. And that's the thing too. So it's better to keep it in the format that the court uh, that the court clerk recognizes because they literally get thrown the fuck off their whole game when you come into something with that, that they're not used to the format or something like that. It fucks them all up. So request for appearance bond. This document is a court brief that instructs the court to have an appearance bond issued at no cost to you in order to underwrite the case and the appearance of your straw man at scheduled court hearings. The court's failure to issue the bond allows you to utilize their dishonor obstruction as a grant 
of their signature by accommodation to be used in a subrogation surety bond that you can make on their behalf because obviously they don't know how to do their job correctly and they do have to be bonded to even have this shit out in the, and heard out in the public. So you notice the court that you are requesting an appearance bond back by your exemption on the private side at no cost to you. Technically, uh, the granting by the court at your request discharges all obligations connected with the case, ends the dispute, and makes you the owner of the matter. At this time, <laughs> that, that would be a pretty slick move right there too. At this time, we are awaiting final outcome of using this process. That shit will be slick, so I like that. I like that idea. Because, I mean, it is chess ultimately, man. And you catch them off guard, you're going to be good. But that's, I mean, that's a fucking funny move right there. I like that one. Slick. So, if the matter is com is a commercial bill, such as a credit card statement or other invoice, and they ignore what you have done and continue sending you more invoices, treat each new bill as an original presentment. Each statement is another offer on which you can do the same process to. This is true for any matter, such as mortgages, credit cards, etc. The offerer's non-response signifies his tacit stipulation that he owes you the amount on your bill. He has implicitly agreed that he owes you the funds by not responding. He has invoked the doctrine of acquiescence and estoppel by silence. So silent, silent acquiescence. As available as a judgment and estoppel on the law is, it is, uh, it is not the best that we can make of a uh, situation. We would like to make money from the event. For this, we need a second judgment and estoppel, one of the facts, money, one on the facts and the money. So when you do this, you establish on the record the amount that the offerer owes you in costs, fees, and damages. The amount can be anything you choose since only you can decide what you think the matter is worth to you. Besides, it is all nothing but digits in the matrix. And it really is all just that. It's all just fucking numbers and letters, man. So if a court procedure is involved as soon as possible, file a court brief in the standard court pleading format entitled Notice of Acceptance, by which you notice the court of the following. One, you have accepted the charging instrument for value, banker's acceptance, and returned it in exchange for settlement and closure of the accounting concerning the matter. Number two, settlement of the account has been done privately by exchanging your exemption for the discharge of the obligation by use of your private treasury UCC contract trust account, your, uh, your social number without dashes. That, that's your closed account. You are operating in the capacity of being the living principal, authorized representative, and attorney, in fact, for the straw man. So it isn't you that's dealing with those charges. You're speaking there as an authorized representative on behalf of the straw man because it can't speak because it's dead. So it needs your commercial energy or your physical labor to uh, fulfill the obligations and perform the obligations of the straw man. So that's what you're there to do. And it's really that simple. If that made any sense. <laughs> All right, so let's see. This is the last one right here. As exhibits attached to your notice of acceptance include color copies, preferably certified by notary, of the uh, following foundational documents. Your employer identification ID, uh, your private agreement, your security agreement, pains and penalties, uh, SPA IHHA, also filed notice of request for waiver, notice of request for remedy, because they do have to... Uh, offer you remedy they can't just throw you out you know throw you out there to hang like that and just and offer no offer no uh remedy because whoever creates the issue has to create the uh, solution and they already know that but they're gonna pretend not to so put an autograph then bullet stamp postage stamp on the back lower right hand side of every page of every court brief you file obtain multiple copies of your documents for the court and have the clerk file stamp them all if the case is not dismissed which it usually is file the court bond Explanation of the process involved in accusation and prosecution. The situation involved in having to appear in court as follows. And we'll get into the rest of that in the next video. But this, this is a really good crucial part of the game to understand. Because when you understand it from a commercial aspect, then you can approach the venue as such. And you can set yourself up properly as well. So, because it is a game of chess. Stop playing checkers with these clowns. That's what I got for you for now. Until we meet again.